before, before this, you succeed in your life or before you succeed in business or anything, there must be two or three things that must be true. The first one, there must be a logic to that thing that you want to do. <laughs> there must be a logic to it. The second thing, there must be a plan. And then the third thing, there must be faith. If these three things are not there, you know, they won't happen. And faith, I'm not talking about religion, just that faith believe that it can be done you know that's your self-esteem that i'm the kind of person who can achieve this i'm worthy of this um so and i'm going to give some personal examples later um you know it's not there but like many of the things i'm going to say and some of the exercises are not there but just make notes of them you know um then there's there must be a logic to nigeria succeeding <laughs> before it succeeds and one of the features of logic is structure is structure See, your, uh, this, is, this is true in your life, it's true in your family, it's true in your business, it's true of a country. And I remember the, um, I read zoology, biology for my first degree. And um, so we read of this experiment that they did with, um, I think it was pumpkin. When a pumpkin grew, or watermelon or something like that, one of, something in that family. And the, the researcher put one of them into a bottle. You know, when they were really small, they just bought it and tiny. So put one of them in a bottle and then sort of sealed it and then left the other to grow on its own. What do you think happened after three months? So the one that was put in the bottle just grew, filled up the bottle and, and stayed that, that way. But the one that was allowed to grow, you know, really grew very big, like a big pumpkin. And so your structure, the way you structure your life will limit your achievement. The way you structure your time will limit your productivity. The way you structure your relationship will limit the joy that you get into it. You see, because a husband and wife also need to put some structure in their relation. Everything needs structure. Without structure, it's difficult to actually. So, and, and that's really very powerful because you decide this is what I want to be. I want to be an A student, or I want to be a company where, where in the next three years, we want to make like, you know, in our own company, $5 million revenue. See, you don't, there must be a logic to it. There must be a structure that will take you from here to there. So structure limits growth or it enhances it. The same thing with your organization. A lot of people, a lot of companies I work uh, for um, can do much better than they are doing, but they have structures they have organizational structures that are not aligned with the strategy where they want to go. So this is where you want to go, but you need to structure the business, structure your HR, structure your processes in such a way that you'll get there. You know, so you can't be going to Badagri, but then you build a road going to Abeokuta. That's what structure does. And a lot of people want to have a certain kind of destiny in their lives, but the structure, the way they've structured their lives is not the way. And then you want to be an A student, you're going to structure your time structure your uh, life to be there. So I've been crying out to, in, to Nigeria for many years that the structure is limiting us. See, there's no way you can, in one country and in one constitution, like he said, you have 36 states. You take one common entrance. My child gets 150 and is not taken because of where he comes from. And another child somewhere gets two. Seven, and it's taken. Where are you going with that kind of civilization? A lot of people are too emotional. Where are you going with that kind of civilization? And then it doesn't stop there. When he finishes and comes out with a PhD, say in a, a PhD, say in a medical engineering or something, whatever. And then this other person finishes somewhere in Niger with Arabic, you know, Arabic studies. Uh, bachelor's of Arts in Arabic Studies. And then they want to look for somebody to head the Ministry of Health. And these are two choices. Because of where you come from, even with your PhD in medicine, you can never, you can't. You know, because I go to those ministries, I, you know, I used to, you know, like when I was doing this consulting, you meet people who are heading ministries and they have no idea about what they are doing. But because they come from a certain area, you know, so and they call it quota. No civilization grows on quota. Civilization is driven by merit, by research. It's not by quota. 
And so since we, as long as we have a country that is being run this way, pray all you want. Fast all you want. Go to camp and pray and cry down for heaven all you want. We will not move forward. And that's why the more people pray. And people don't sit back to actually ask. Are things changing? But they just say, God will help us. Very stupid statement. I'm telling you, forgive me for saying that. That's one of the stupidest statements that are here in this country. God will help us. And then once they say God will help us, that's, you know, it, it, every other thing is God's fault. It, that summarizes it. So we can't use our thinking. We can't use our skills. We can't use everything that God has given us. The Inugu State uh, uh, governor all over the whole place. Inugu State is in God's hand. The day I saw it, I said, I pity these people. I pity these people. You became governor, you went for an election, and then when the thing now uh, came to you, you now said, Enugu State is in the hands of God. So now, what will happen when Enugu State doesn't develop after four years? What will happen? Who's for? Yeah, it's in God's hand. You know, so I think we need to, I'm glad we're asking these questions because for me, I, this is my joy. And I tell you sincerely before, you know, before God, this is what, what I really want to achieve. I want, you know, I want Africans to come up because we go to different places, you know. You, you, you look at research books. I go to, is it JS or something? Some of you uh, in, in, in the university say you're lecturing. You look at, you look at researches coming out and then you were in MIT, you know, uh, recently. So you look at researchers coming up from different parts of the world. You see where research has already gone in physics, in medicine, in robotics. And then you, you pick an average journal, you know, scientific journal. You will not see any African. All of them, all these publications, year in, year out. We are not, we, we're not, whatever, we're not researching. We're not finding things. People will come from over there, come and research the things that we have, go and package in a product, give us back. That's what happened to bitter leaf. Anybody seen bitter leaf capsules? Yeah. Now they are selling bitter leaf to us as cancer drugs. We have had bitter leaf for years. So now if you look at even the ad that the pharmaceutical company put up and all that, how this is one a wonderful like, miracle crop that grows in the jungles of Africa, blah, 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 you know, and the bitterness, something, it kills cancer, very, very so effective and things like that. But we know a lot of people don't like taking the bitter things. So you know what we have done? We have now processed and put in a capsule, just swallow it. And they're selling it back to us and to that. We have bitter leaf all over the place growing. All, you just cut the stem and put beside it or whatever. And then it works. And then like my friend will say, what are we doing? When the other people are researching and publishing, my friend will say, we're in the camp doing Oluwa Dede, Oluwa Bo, Oluwa Dede, Oluwa Bo, Oluwa Dede, Oluwa Bo, Oluwa Dede, Oluwa Bo, Oluwa Dede, Oluwa Bo. I know that. And then we are there in the camp doing that. The Chinese and all these people are in our bushes. You go to all these quarries, they're the people who own the quarry in different places. And then they come back and sell the things you know, to us and we can buy. We need to change these things, okay? And join me too.